author of two books, Bioidentical Hormones 101 and Natural Medicine 101. To find out more, go to drdash.com. That's Dr. D A H dot com. Or call 954-792-4663 to schedule an appointment. You're listening. <clears throat> You're listening to Staying Healthy with Dr. Dash. I'm your host, Dr. Jeffrey Dash. Welcome to the show. Uh, today we're going to talk about the topic of women's hormones. Uh, first, we're going to uh, talk about uh, go over what does the hormone do in the body? Uh, why do we need hormones? What are, what are hormones? A hormone is a little chemical messenger that circulates through the body to trillions of our cells. Remember, uh, we are made out of a little individual trillions of cells. Each cell is like a little bag of water. Inside that bag, little bag of water, there's another little bag called the nucleus. The nucleus is um, contains the DNA inside the cell. Remember, we have trillions of our cells that make up the body. And in addition to that, we have to remember a very important thing. And that is that uh, all of these cells are constantly uh, uh, regenerating. In other words, uh, we have layers of cells that uh, age and then die. For example, in the skin, uh, there's a basal layer of the skin which produces new skin cells which then rise to the surface. And the uh, surface uh, cells on our skin will then age and then slough off and they'll be replaced by new cells. The, our blood cells, for example, are, are the blood that we have circulating in our, in our uh, arteries and veins, in our body, the, are made out of these little microscopic uh, red cells. The, uh, the, the blood cells that we make are made uh, by our bone marrow, and they come from little uh, stem cells. They're little primitive, uh, uh, undifferentiated cells that then divide into uh, blood cells. The, um, this process replaces all of our blood cells every 90 days. So the blood cells uh, uh, last only for a few months, and they must be replaced every 90 days. Uh, the way we do that uh, is by uh, new cell generation. And in order to make new cells, we have to uh, have the DNA in, our, in the, in the uh, primitive cell. The DNA has to instruct the cell to divide. And, and produce new cells. That's how we make new cells. Our, uh, our, base, our basal cells, our, our stem cells, uh, divide, they replicate, and generate new cells. And of course, in order to generate the new cells and replicate, we must have a nutrition. We must have uh, protein, and we must have uh, the proper uh, vitamins, minerals, uh, food intake which is then utilized to manufacture new cells. So where do hormones come in on this? Well, the hormones uh, circulate, they're little messengers that circulate in our body. They attach directly to the DNA inside of our cells and tell the DNA to manufacture new proteins. Then, and so without that hormone messenger, our cells are unable to manufacture new, program, new proteins and they're unable to replicate and generate new cells. What's the importance of that? Well, remember, uh, we live, our, our daily lives are based on the ability to regenerate uh, cells, to replace the, the old cells that have died off in our body, and uh, we also need to replace the um, protein, structural protein in the body called collagen. And if we're unable to do that because we're missing uh, either the hormone messenger or because we're, we're lacking proper nutrients to generate uh, new cells, then that will produce degenerative disease. In other words, the body degenerates because we don't have new cells and we do have, can't manufacture new collagen. So that's the importance of hormones in the body. Uh, so let's go to uh, another important question which comes up all the time in my office. Um, and this is uh, relates to, uh, we had a, a lady sitting in my office last week who asked me the question, uh, why won't my doctor prescribe bioidentical hormones for me. Uh, this is a lady who went to her doctor and the doctor told her that uh, they they prescribe synthetic hormones and not bioidentical hormones. And so we're going to talk about the difference between synthetic and bioidentical and we're going to talk explain to you why bioidentical hormones, bioidentical hormones are more effective and safer than synthet synthetic hormones. Um, 
Now, first of all, to answer the question why doctors prescribe synthetic hormones instead of bioidenticals, uh, which is difficult to understand because there's no question that bioidentical hormones are more effective and safer. The reason for why the medical system and, and the primary care doctors and the ob doctors uh, and all prescribe synthetic hormones is because of the influence of the medical, because of the influence of the pharmaceutical industry. And one of these ways they influence doctors is by planting uh, in, information in medical journals. This is called medical ghostwriting. And this uh, was a shocking scandal which was uncovered by Senator Grassley's committee. Senator Grassley's committee uh, looked at um, the information uh, from drug litigation discovery and found that there were about 60 articles in the uh, women's hormone literature, in the medical literature, that uh, in which there was medical ghostwriting. That means that uh, there were, if you look at the author of the article listed, there's a prestigious name of an academic MD opinion leader who appears as the author. But unknown to us readers, the article is actually written by a paid-for-hire writer who represents the interests of the drug company that makes the synthetic hormones. So we have about 60 articles uh, that were later discovered to be ghostwritten by paid, uh, paid writers. And these articles downplayed the adverse effects of synthetic hormones and created doubt about bioidentical hormones. So this type of practice, medical ghostwriting, is scientific misconduct and fraud on a huge scale. This is a huge scandal and uh, an outrage which harms society. It's harming all of us and it corrupts the medical literature. Uh, if, you know, this is something that um, we really need to clean up and prevent this from happening in the future. Uh, let's take a, a quick look at the history of, of um, synthetic hormones as prescribed by the medical system over the last uh, 40, 50 years. The, the very first hormone which was prescribed by doctors in 1938 was called DES. This is also called diethylstilbestrol. This was the, this was the first synthetic hormone invented by medical science. Uh, this was a chemically altered, uh, chemically uh, altered hormone which does not appear in nature anywhere. This was approved by the FDA and freely given to millions of women. Uh, for 35 years, from 1940 until 1975. After 35 years of producing adverse side effects, mainly the, the most severe and pronounced uh, adverse side effect was that DES produced cancer, cervical cancer, in the daughters of women who took it. This was discovered and uh, report. I mean, this was reported in 1971 in the New England Journal of Medicine that uh, DES produced cervical cancer. And it took four more years, four, four years later, in 1975, DES was banned by the FDA. So here's an example of a monster hormone. It was a chemically altered uh, hormone. Not a human hormone, but uh, they took a hormone and altered it chemically. And they used it for 35 years and then discovered that it's causing cancer, not in the women taking it, but in the daughters of the women taking it. DES. Uh, and it took 35 years for them to figure that out. Uh, after DES was banned, the drug industry came up with uh, a, another replacement, a replacement drug called Premarin. Premarin uh, is a natural hormone. It's a estrogen that comes from pregnant horses. So it is natural, it comes from horses, which the horses are natural, but it is not human. Premarin was uh, FDA approved, approved by the FDA in 1942 and was used uh, widely for, uh, and it's, it's still in use. Uh, problem with Premarin was that it, Premarin caused an estimated 15,000 cases of endometrial cancer, representing the largest epidemic uh, of a serious disease ever reported. And the reason for that was the medical system didn't know any better. They were giving Premarin, this est horse estrogen, to women for decades without realizing that it was causing endometrial cancer because in or it was not uh, counterbalanced with the appropriate progesterone. So they quickly learned uh, you know, after that, um, that in the